Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. With INICT approaching next month, I have planned to come up with the medicine PYQ series. These questions are often repeated in the exams and here we will be mainly going through the MCQ discussions. Each episode we will try to cover about 15 MCQs. I hope this helps. So let's get started. So the first question, definition of PUO includes all of the following except that is pyrexia of unknown origin. And options are undiagnosed after one week of investigation, immunocompromised status should be ruled out, temperature more than 38.3 degrees Celsius and fever persisting for more than three weeks. So first to answer such question, we should know the definition of PUO. So the definition of PUO includes fever more than 38.3 degrees Celsius on two occasions, duration more than three weeks, no immunocompromised state and diagnosis not certain after a complete history, physical examination and routine and obligatory investigations. So if you see the options, option B that is immunocompromised status should be ruled out. It is correct. Temperature more than 38.3 degrees Celsius. This is also correct. And fever persisting for more than three weeks. This is also correct. So the option which is not a part of the definition is undiagnosed after one week of investigation. It should be at least three weeks. So that is the correct answer. Next question. All are components of curb 65 except confused state, respiratory rate of more than 30 per minute, blood urea nitrogen value greater than 7 millimole per liter and systolic blood pressure less than 100 millimeter mercury. So first of all, what is CURB-65? So CURB-65 is a score which helps us to assess the severity of pneumonia and also helps us to decide whether to uh, treat the patient on OPD basis, IPD basis or in the ICU. And the components of CURB-65 are C for confusion, U for urea more than 7 millimole per liter, R for respiratory rate more than 30, B for blood pressure that is systolic less than 90, diastolic less than 60 you can remember as 90 by 60 and then 65 is the age that is age more than equal to 65 years so now we know the components of curve 65 we'll see the option once again so confused state that is correct respiratory rate of more than 30 per minute that is also correct blood urea nitrogen value greater than 7 millimole per liter so this is also correct so the last option it is systolic blood pressure less than 100 it is wrong it should be less than 90 which is correct so that is all about components of curve 65 it is very frequently repeated question so also the scoring if the score is 0 we treat the patient on opd basis if the score is 1 to 2 we treat the patient in ipd and if the score is more than 2 we treat the patient in icu moving to next question as an intern in the emergency ward which of the following method would you consider as correct regarding the nasogastric tube length estimation the options are tip of the nose to ear to zephysternum tip of the nose to angle of ear to umbilicus mouth to ear to umbilicus mouth to ear to midway between zephyr sternum and umbilicus so the formula to remember this is the next method nex where n stands for nose e stands for ear x stands for zephyr sternum so the option a is the direct answer tip of the nose to ear to zephyr sternum is used to measure the correct length for nasogastric tube insertion moving forward next question a 53 year old patient was admitted with complaints of dyspnea on examination he has a puffy face with engorged veins over the chest and svc obstruction is suspected chest x-ray is showing mediastinal enlargement what is the next step so options are total blood count with peripheral smear ct thorax start cyclophosphamide and urgent referral to radiotherapy so if you see the clinical stem they have given us the condition they have also given us a finding where chest x-ray is showing mediastinal enlargement they are asking what is the next best step so definitely taking a blood count with peripheral smear is required but that is not the immediate next step option b ct thorax so this is important because CT thorax will give us a lot of information regarding the extent of the involvement, the surrounding structures. Also, we can go for a CT guided biopsy if needed. So CT thorax looks the correct answer. Let us first rule out the other options, starting cyclophosphamide and urgent referral to radiotherapy. So we will not immediately start treatment because until and unless we know the extent, it is difficult to decide on treatment. So the next best step is to go for a CT thorax, which is the correct answer here. Next question, a patient on anti-tubercular therapy develops tingling sensation in the limbs. Which of the following when substituted can result in improvement of symptoms? Options are thiamine, pyridoxine, folic acid and methylcobalamin. So among all the ATT drugs, isoniazide is known to cause such symptoms because isoniazide blocks pyridoxine. Pyridoxine is a cofactor in conversion of uh, glutamate to GABA. And since pyridoxine is blocked because of isoniazide, Glutamate is not converted to GABA. Because of this, there are symptoms of tingling sensation in the limbs. And substituting ATT with pyridoxin, that is vitamin B6, result in improvement of symptoms. Thiamine, vitamin B1, folic acid and methylcobalamin have no role in improvement of symptoms. I have made a detailed video on ATT and its complications. You can find the link in the description or in the i button. 
and you can watch the entire video there if you wish to so the correct answer in this question is pyridoxine moving forward next question a patient comes to emergency department with fever and headache on examination he has neck stiffness csf analysis was done and it shows the following findings most likely diagnosis is the csf findings are opening pressure is increased proteins are mildly increased glucose is normal and lymphocytes are increased so the options are tuberculosis neisseria gonorrhea cryptococcus and coxsackie so in the clinical question they have already given us the symptoms they have already given us the csf analysis and its findings as well so this is going somewhere towards meningitis and they have given the csf findings so to answer such question we must know the csf findings in different organisms so let us quickly go through them so csf findings in meningitis are opening pressure normal is 5 to 20 in bacterial it's elevated in fungal it's elevated in viral it's normal or slightly elevated in tuberculosis it's variable now uh, coming to the cell count for bacterial definitely is increased more of polymorphs for viral it is lymphocytic predominant for fungal as well it's lymphocytic predominant tuberculosis is also lymphocytic predominant coming to the protein content normal is 15 to 45 and it is raised in all of the conditions uh, particularly it is very high in tuberculosis coming to glucose level the normal values are 45 to 85 and it is reduced in bacterial fungal and tuberculosis in viral mostly it is normal sometimes it might go low but mostly it is normal for cultures we can get uh, positive cultures in bacterial uh, we can get afb positive in tuberculosis and we can also get fungal elements positive but for viral it is generally negative so now going to this picture if we go back to the question they are saying opening pressure is increased proteins are mildly increased glucose is normal and lymphocytes is increased so if we see lymphocytes can be increased in tuberculosis cryptococcus and coxsackie so definitely bacteria cause is ruled out if we see proteins are mildly increased so we know in tuberculosis generally it is very high and glucose is always low so tuberculosis is ruled out coming to the fungal and coxsackie so for fungal generally the glucose should have been low so best answer here is coxsackie which is a virus and this is a finding which is suggestive of viral meningitis where opening pressure is increased proteins are mildly increased glucose is normal and lymphocytes are increased so i hope now you know why the answer is coxsackie virus and not the other three options so such questions can be solved easily when you know the table and also by ruling out options then the next question metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap is seen in all except proximal rta pancreatitis severe diarrhea and salicylic poisoning so metabolic acidosis can be of normal anion gap can be of high anion gap if you know the causes of high anion gap and normal anion gap you can directly come to the answer so if we look at the causes for high anion gap generally it is associated with ketones that is diabetic ketoacidosis and starvation ketosis and then uremia that is in chronic renal failure then lactate that is associated with sepsis hypovolemia congestive heart failure and certain toxins like methanol ethylene glycol salicylic acid and isoniazid etc so these are causes of high anion gap causes of normal anion gap are renal tubular acidosis gi causes like diarrhea ileostomy pancreatitis and hyperchloremia that is excessive saline administration so knowing the causes if you see the options so proximal rta pancreatitis and severe diarrhea are causes of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and salicylate poisoning is associated generally with high anion gap metabolic acidosis so the correct answer here is salicylate poisoning i have made a complete video on acid based disorders uh, where how to approach such questions what are the causes of acidosis and alkalosis and how to identify the compensation and the primary change you can watch the video later if you want to revise the link is in the description below or is in the i button moving forward the next question the drug of choice for treating scrub typhus is doxycycline ciprofloxacin chloramphenicol and azithromycin this is a direct question and the answer is doxycycline azithromycin can also be used as an alternative and it is generally used in pregnant women who are affected with scrub typhus because doxycycline is contraindicated there otherwise doxycycline is a drug of choice for treating scrub typhus next question management of hyperkalemia includes all except calcium gluconate insulin drip salbutamol nebulization and magnesium sulfate so we know calcium gluconate is the first step we give to stabilize the membrane insulin helps in movement of potassium inside the cell so insulin is definitely the management salbutamol nebulization that is beta 2 agonists are also used in hyperkalemia so the answer here is magnesium sulfate which is not used in treatment of hyperkalemia so the answer here is magnesium sulfate next question which of the following is not seen in tumor lysis syndrome hyperphosphatemia hyperuricemia hypercalcemia and hyperkalemia so to answer this you should know the criteria of tumor lysis syndrome which can be understood by syro bishop definition and 
it has two criteria mainly one is laboratory criteria and the second is clinical criteria in laboratory criteria the lysis of the tumor cell leads to hyperkalemia more than 6 hyperuricemia more than 8 hyperphosphatemia more than 4.5 but there is hypocalcemia that is less than 7 mg per dl and clinically there is acute kidney injury seizures neuromuscular irritability cardiac arrhythmia or sudden death so these are the criteria which define tumor lysis syndrome if we go back to the question so we know hypercalcemia is not found hypocalcemia is seen rest all options are correct hyperphosphatemia hyperuricemia and hyperkalemia are the correct answers so option c is the correct answer next question which of the following is a negative acute phase reactant uh, albumin heptoglobin ferritin and c reactive protein so negative acute phase reactant means the parameter will fall in infection so if you see crp ferritin and heptoglobin are the markers which are generally increased during an infection so they are positive acute phase react and albumin are parameters which generally fall during an infection so that is a negative acute phase reactant so the direct answer here is albumin which is a negative phase reactant next question what is not a feature of myasthenia gravis among the following muscle fatigue absent deep tendon reflexes normal pupillary reflex and ptosis so we know in myasthenia gravis generally the most common symptom is muscle fatigue so that is the correct answer ptosis is also another symptom which is very common in myasthenia gravis so this is also correct coming to absent deep tendon reflex and normal pupillary reflex so in myasthenia gravis there is no pupillary defect the normal pupillary reflex is a feature of myasthenia gravis and deep tendon reflexes are preserved in myasthenia gravis and they are not lost so absent deep tendon reflex is not a feature of myasthenia gravis this is the correct answer i have made a complete video on myasthenia gravis if you want to revise the topic you can definitely watch them later Moving forward, which of the following drugs is commonly used for treating community acquired pneumonia in OPD? Vancomycin, ceftriaxone, azithromycin and streptomycin. So vancomycin generally they are preserved for MRSA uh, organisms. Ceftriaxone is an IV drug which is generally used in IPD patients. Azithromycin is the correct answer here which is generally used. D is streptomycin they are generally not used for treating community acquired pneumonia. So coming back to option C, that is azithromycin. So oral azithromycin commonly used for treating community acquired pneumonia and OPD basis. So this is the correct answer that is C, azithromycin. Coming to the last question, arterial blood gas findings of a patient are pH 7.12, PCO2 50, bicarbonate 28. What is the diagnosis? So they have given you the findings of ABG. They have asked you the primary disorder with the compensation. So first of all, always you have to look at the pH. So if you see the pH, it is reduced, it is 7.12. Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. If we see the PCO2, it is increased. If we see the bicarbonate, it is also increased. So since pH is reduced, we know it is an acidosis. So options having alkalosis are ruled out. So we are left with two options, A and B. Now if we see PCO2 and bicarbonate is increased and they are opposite to the direction of change from the pH. Uh, so whenever the change is opposite to the direction of pH, we know the mnemonic Rome where opposite means a respiratory process so this is a respiratory acidosis with a metabolic compensation so the option b rules out and the correct answer here is respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation so i hope guys this video was useful and you enjoyed watching the uh, previous uh, questions and uh, discussions and i'll be coming up with few more episodes and we'll try to cover at least 50 to 60 mcqs which have been asked in previous year aims and central institute examinations till then keep revising keep solving mcqs mainly focus on the pyq topics and I hope you'll do well in the INICT exams. See you in the next one. Cheers.